Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today is a very special day because I'm here with Weston from Roseanneville. Heck of a handshake. Hey, thanks. How you doing? Good. It's good to be down here in Pleasant Grove. A little yep. prettier down here in Salt Lake. Oh, Salt Lake's got a big brewery scene, though. It's true. Yeah, but I like the mountains. I'm a big mountain guy. Mountains Boots, are good. hiking, goes hand in hand. It all fits the vibe. <laughs> right. Yeah, so tell us about your channel. So we cut boots and shoes in half. We do it from a professional leather's perspective because boots and shoes are one of these things where you literally have no idea what you're buying because boots are inherently like self-enclosed. You know, you have no idea what the different layers are on the inside until you literally cut them in half. And cobblers have been doing this for, and, and boot brands have been doing it for hundreds of years because it was one of the ways for brands to show like this is the quality that we represent. And in the more modern era with foreign mass production and trying to drive all those margins up, the price down, it's really hard to, to know what quality boots you're getting because none of these brands really show you what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so all we did was just revive that old school idea, just cut them in half, and, hey, here's what you're actually buying, and it works really well. Yeah, so if your boots have any skullduggery going on in their soles, Weston's going to find it. That's right. And if you are shopping for boots, it is critical that you go subscribe to Roseanneville <laughs> because you're over $100,000 worth of boots you've cut in yeah. half now. So if you're looking at a pair of boots, there's a good chance Weston's not only worn them on a hike and for a few weeks, but he's also cut them in half and he's pointed out every little flaw in them. That's so right. if you want to make sure you know what you're getting right, Weston, he's your man. However, here at Blade HQ, we talk about knives. So why are we having a boot guy on talking about knives? Well, I guess a leather guy who also does boots talking about knives is because boot knives are one of our biggest search terms. Like, so my job is okay. SEO copywriting. Yeah. You're like, we should do something about boot knives. I'm like, I don't know boots. <laughs> but we know Weston, and yeah. Weston knows boots. <laughs> so what we've done is we've broken it down to five categories okay. of different types of knives. We have work knives, fashion knives, outdoor knives, tactical knives and like an everyday carry thing. And we asked you to bring in some boots that right. would fit the same vibe. Yep. So we'll start this off with work knives. And the knife I picked for a work knife is the White River M1. So this one has a CPM S35 VN blade, this micarta handle. And what I love is it has a nice crown spot right here, so it really just nestles in the hand. Here, try that out. Yeah, hey, give me a feel of that. A crown what? Uh, like the crown in the, like the front of the spine here. Oh, okay. Most of the time. I don't know a lot about knives. I'm the, I, like, I know boots. And so this has actually been really interesting working with you guys and kind of checking out your knives and stuff, learning all the lingo. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, that's pretty comfortable. I like yeah. that. But it's light. It has a nice blade steel. In fact, the new ones have magnet cut on them. That's really exciting. That's I don't know a, what that is. It's a fancy blade <laughs> steel. What it means is you're getting great edge retention, great corrosion resistance, and it's going to resist breakage really oh, well. Cool. well. So it's a great balanced blade steel. There are some that will outperform it in other areas, but if you want, like, Top marks in every category, Magna Cuts your man. Cool. But yeah, but these are great. USA made by White River Knives. And what I love about these sheaths is they are very small. And that's why I thought maybe this could be a good boot knife. So what's a good working boot we can compare it to? The boot I brought was the Thoroughgood. Because this boot is kind of the go-to boot for most construction workers, most guys that are actually working for a living. Because the thing about boots is a lot of times, you know, they are a piece of equipment for people. Mm -hmm. When it comes to their job, they need something they can rely on, depend on, something that's comfortable, something they don't have to spend six months breaking in. And that's what Thoroughgood really kind of represents because mm -hmm. you can see like how soft and flexible this upper is. You know, this is a really malleable leather. They've, this is tanned by Seidel in Milwaukee and they purposely just tumble this over and over and over after it's tanned to get all these natural break points so you get that almost pre-broken in look. And then on the inside, if you look here, you can see. These ones have a bit of a different leather, but it's the same boot. Yeah, yeah, same boot, different leather. This is the more popular leather, for being honest. But the first thing, it comes with this nice, squishy insole. So a lot of like work boots don't come with a really soft insole. A lot of them mm -hmm. are more like uh, leather-based. And so you got that on top of another really soft layer of pour-on sty style foam. It's like two or three millimeters, gonna give you just a little extra squish. Mm -hmm. Underneath that, you've got that fiberboard that's gonna break into the shape of your foot. Because you have cork underneath, that allows that area to compress, giving you that custom footprint in your boot, making mm -hmm. it extra comfortable. And you've got that really soft wedge sole you're standing on all day. So that's that your, is a thick yeah. sole though, look at that. And construction workers love this because, and, it, and a lot of workers, anything that you don't need a ton of grip on, this is kind of the go-to outsole because it's so soft, it's so squishy, it lasts a decently long time. And so all that combined makes it just a really comfortable boot, really easy boot to buy. It's made in the US as well. You can buy them pretty much anywhere. They're like under 300 bucks and they are, one of the most recommended boots that I, I recommend to people. And they're like, what, what boot should I get? I'm like, try a Thoroughgood. 
a thorough good. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to attach the knife to the boot, right? Which we'll talk a little bit more about attachments. You could probably clip it to the outside or maybe lace it in the laces. Yeah. Like go like a look boot knife. I'd probably do it on the outside of the boot though. And you could just reach down and grab the knife. Right, and something we talked about a little bit before filming was the taller the boot, the more comfortable it is going to have to have mm -hmm. a, a knife on your boot. And Thorough Goods makes, this is a six inch boot, they also make an eight inch boot. And so ideally okay. for a knife boot or a boot knife, you'd want maybe like an eight inch boot here. or a ten inch boot. So you have a little more clearance over that ankle zone. You can still do it, but the taller the boot, the more comfortable it's going to be to attach it. Yeah, I think one of the things that you were saying when we were talking earlier that I really vibe with is if you want to carry a boot knife, you should carry a you should get a boot that works for it. Right. Like it, like I want to carry a boot knife, then you want something tall so it's not going to be harassing your ankle, and you might also want to play around with different mounting hardware options. So we have a few of those. We'll talk about those in a minute. But if you want to carry that here, then I would say probably clip it or lace it. I don't know. What do you think? I have to clip it on the side. Because I, I, I don't love the idea of like, on a, like especially for a work boot specifically, since we're talking about work boots, having mm -hmm. that kind of flapping around. So if I was working in these, I'd probably clip it to the collar. Okay. I like that. Maybe more casual boot. Oh, yeah, get in there. They smell so good. <laughs> well, <laughs> I love Give me leather. a whiff. <laughs> Give me Dude, a you'd be surprised. Everyone in the shop still smells every single boot that comes in. So I've heard somewhere that if you have like a really well-made leather boot, it doesn't stink as much. That's very true because leather is naturally antimicrobial, nat naturally antibacterial. It breathes a lot more, so you don't get as much build-up sweat on the inside like fabric does, where it holds onto it. And then obviously, it's like any clothing that you've sweated in; it starts stinking pretty much immediately as soon as you start sweating in it. Mm -hmm. Versus leather, because of all those properties, it just doesn't smell nearly as fast. It doesn't build up a uh, bacteria as quickly, and so that's why, for literally since humans invented the idea idea of putting like animal flesh around their foot, they've gone with leather because it's ridiculously durable. It's nature's perfect material to wrap muscle in. And so when it comes to choosing material to wrap your foot in, leather happens to be the perfect choice. Even thousands and thousands of years later with all the technology we have, leather still undefeated. I love it. Our next category is boots for fashion. So tell me about these next boots we've got, Weston. So these are the Thursday boots. These are their Captain boot. It's one of the more popular new brands in the last couple decades. They're a new up and coming brand because what they've done is really figure out how to make a traditional heritage style boot, but still make it fairly affordable and make it look really nice. Because a lot of heritage boots are really big and bulbous toes. You know, they're more traditional, like from basically where this era of boot comes from, like the 40s, 50s, 60s, when they needed nice wide toe boxes because they were work boots. So Thursday saw this happening in the heritage market all through the 2010s and 20, or I guess the 20s or 2000s and 2010s was like, we can make a better looking boot that's still heritage, it's affordable, and that's what they came up with, with this boot. And so it's hugely popular because you get that heritage look, it's affordable, and so a lot of people love this boot for style because it does have that more pointy toe box, and they're just a pretty killer boot through and through. Yeah, this is a lot lighter than that boot we're looking right. at, the Thoroughgood, but man, it's yeah. been... Yeah, give it a whiff. Mm, get in there. <laughs> and this is these are like these are Mexican leathers too, because th these boots are made in Mexico. That's part of how they can get that price down. But Mexican leather smells better than any leather. I don't care what anyone says. You know, we got, we got our like famous tanneries in the U.S. We got Horween, we've got Seidel, we've got Wicked and Craig. I still love the Mexican smell leather. Yeah. And one thing I'm thinking is like you're saying these are like 200 ish yeah. for a pair of these. But like we're looking at the thorough goods, and I'm sure there's other work boot brands that get expensive, right? Like yeah, seven, eight hundred bucks. Yep. But if you're into fashion, like maybe the brown leather isn't going to go with your black pants or whatever, so you can get multiple pairs of boots, yeah. to sort of fit in to your fashion right. wardrobe. And the, the cool thing about this boot is it's still really well built. Because if you look at this compared to the thorough good that we just talked about, it's very similar construction. You've got that insole, it gives you a little bit of squish, that fiberboard underneath, and then you've got that cork. But the thing that's different about this compared to like the thorough good is mm -hmm. you've got a lot more leather in the construction. So this is more of like that traditional style of construction where you've got that leather midsole. And what that does is it compresses and shapes the shape of your foot. It looks more classy. It's a really durable material compared to like more fiberboard board that's literally just compressed paper, got a full leather heel stack, so it's right in that line between like a really classy like uh, dress boot mm -hmm. and a more heritage boot, and that's where Thursdays found their sweet spot in the market. Okay, so the knife I have to match that is this Kaiser Smolt. 
And I grabbed this one because it's it's got what's called a micarta inlay here. Okay. So micarta is a material that is a laminate of resin and fabrics. And it kind of has a nice warm, clothy texture. Let's give it a feel. Yeah, check it out. And yeah. it also absorbs your hand oils a little okay. bit and patinas with time. Cool. And I, thought, I love that. Yeah. I'm all about that. And when it comes to boots, I thought patina is the name of the game. Right. Like you carry this in, it wears into your foot on the inside, on the outside, how your ankle bends, how everything. Yeah, exactly. It, it shows, it's like it, it becomes an extension of who yeah. you are. And I thought micarta, and then this blade has a black coating on it, and that'll wear off with time as you go. And then underneath it's CPM3V, which is a carbon steel, so that'll patina as well. So I thought, if you're gonna have a, a shoe that looks like your lifestyle, right. this is a knife that'll look like your lifestyle with it. Well, they look kind of similar too. You know, got that kind of like thinner pointy look to it. Like they do kind of match in aesthetics. I get it. Yeah, you chose well. I like this one. Yeah. That's cool. That's a fun knife. Yeah, so I picked the Kaiser Smolt. And I think that's a great yeah. round off to our fashion. If you're yeah. dressing up to look the part. I think this is the boot knife and this is the boot. And our next category is hiking. All right, so these boots look amazing. They're incredible, but these are your hiking pick. Tell me about them. Yeah, so we went a little different route with these because this is your, instead of doing your more casual, like what most people are gonna buy, because there's so many hiking boots out there, you can go to any REI, any store, and just pick up any number of those boots, and they all kind of are the same, they all feel the same, they fit the same. And I wear Merrill Moabs a lot. Yeah, so and that's, yeah, I'm that's like exactly 100 bucks it. into a pair, right. they're great, but these look, another echelon of right. quality. And so this is one I wanted to take to like the, the upper echelon, the top of the top, mm -hmm. because these are the same boots that were worn by Earl Schaefer uh, hiking the Appalachian Trail, the first person to complete it. The first transatlantic flight, uh, stopless flight, was flown in one of these. A ton of uh, presidents have worn them, like both the Bushes wore them, like a bunch of the previous presidents I don't remember their names of, a very popular boot in U.S. history. And it's one of these styles of construction that has been part of the, honestly, the American continent, the U.S. continent, since mm -hmm. uh, before uh, Columbus sailed the, sailed the sea and showed up over here, because these are essentially Native American moccasins combined with traditional European boot construction. And so what I mean by that is like it literally is a moccasin. So if you see here on the inside how this wraps all the way underneath the foot and then all the way to the top, mm -hmm. it's literally just a moccasin. Like it's that single piece of leather under your foot and then it rip, wraps up here, it's sewn here, and so you have a seamless bottom and side. Whereas with most boots, you have a hard edge where that insole ends and the sidewall begins. And so what that does is it gives you a really comfortable feel. You don't have any hard pressure points. It's going to grow and expand to the shape of your foot. You're not going to have really high pressure part points that are going to give you blisters as you wear them. And the problem with this is this is maybe uh, five to ten times longer to make this style of boot compared to any other style of boot. And so because of that, this every other brand that's like this, these moccasin boots that were really popular in the early 1900s have been on the U.S. continent forever or the American continent forever. They almost died off because it's such a labor-intensive way of making things. You can't make these with giant machines. You have to take a pair of elastic pliers and nails and slowly wrap around that leather from the bottom all the way up to the top, and then hand sew all this together. That sounds like a labor of love. It that is probably commands a price point. Yeah, and so they're like six hundred bucks, and mm -hmm. you know it's more than they do that more than once. They they have to last this inner lining, the outer part. And so because of that, most of these brands died off. Uh, Russell itself almost died off until like a younger group of guys that were really passionate about this kind of footwear and that love business bought it and have been reviving it, maintaining a lot of the heritage and the values of the brand. And so this is a, one of those brands I'm like super passionate about because it is like a tried and true American story and it's, it's almost uh, one of a kind. There's a few other moccasin makers, but this is truly one of a kind, uh, even amongst the moccasin makers. Man, so I, I so, I don't know anything about boots, but I'm putting something together in my brain. Tell me if I'm right. So because it takes so much hand work and there's so much passion involved in this, that means that, in theory, because this was hand sewn, it can be unpicked and resewn. You can right. resole this probably indefinitely. Well, and that's why like the Appalachian Trail was first hiked in these because it is a very durable construction. Because most boots, instead of lasting them and wrapping that leather up from the bottom up, you wrap it from the top down. Mm -hmm. And so this, because it's all encapsulated, it be, it's super durable. And so you can even repair this by yourself on the trail. Say you pop really? this toe stitch, all you do is take a little thread with your needle, sew that back together. So it's super repairable, super durable, ridiculously comfortable, and it's been a, like a favorite of Eastern hunters, hikers, and, and outdoorsmen since people have been in the East. 
Man, and I imagine the folks that are making these made them because that's the lifestyle they want to live. Yeah. They want to be out on the trail in the best boots. And and the guys that make these, are like, they're a bunch of like older dudes. Like They're a bunch of guys that have been at Russell for a long time. They're super passionate about it. They're, they're like old dudes, but they're jacked because they're just like lasting all this leather <laughs> all day, every day. And it's, it's really cool. Like when you look into their factory, their videos and stuff, it's like, oh, this is an old school brand through and through. There's no giant machines. It's like an old school shop. It's just a really cool brand. That's awesome. So I have, it's, it's not quite as old school, <laughs> but I have a knife that goes with these. And this one is the Essie Azula. So Essie is a company that is run by Randall's Adventure Training, which is a survival search and rescue organization okay. that does training. And oftentimes they cancel classes during the summer because people get locked <laughs> 600 feet up a cliffside, 12 miles in the back country. That's their jam. And they have a line of knives that they designed sort of for their lifestyle. And it turns out they're really good at it. So these ones are made by Rowan in Idaho, in a sort of mom and pop shop. And the fancy thing about Essie is they want you to use this. They want you to use it, abuse it, do all kinds of crazy stuff. And because of that, this is backed by unmatched warranty in the industry. You can take this thing and I can take a steel hammer and smash this thing into seasoned hickory. And if it hits a knot and breaks, I literally just have to dig the knife out and send it to Essie, and they'll send me a brand new one, no questions asked. Wow. Asked. So that's what I love about them. They come with a nice sheath, comes with a clip right on the side. So if you have a nice tall boot, like this one looks... Yeah, it's a little bit taller. You can get away with that a little bit better. Yep. Clip that on the side. I think that'd be a great companion for all your hikes, and that's why I picked the Essie Azula. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's a good That's a good choice, too, because I kind of like the simplicity of it. You know, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with this, where it's like... The old school way of doing things, the simplicity, I, that's a good match. I like that. That's yeah. cool. Nice. Yeah. I do like the Azula. And also, not a bad price point. There's less than 100 bucks. So if you get a pair of these <laughs> and one of these, you still have enough money for a flight to the trailhead of, <laughs> of the Appalachian. Yeah, all the, all the money you spend on this, you make up a little bit of money buying that knife. It's, a little, it's still 100 bucks is... Still an expensive knife, but still an expensive. We gotta pay for quality, right? <laughs> yep, you get what you pay for, especially in the USA made stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Man, I gotta smell this boot. It just yeah, looks. Get in there. Oh my goodness! Give me these smell so good. Give these, yeah, these will be. Ooh, yeah. All right, and our next category is tactical. So these boots look like they came off of some GI who's prowling around. Yeah. And some other continent. Well, you pretty much nailed it. These are some of the favorite boots of the special forces, the guys in the military. This is a pair of Loa boots. Mm -hmm. And everyone that's in the military, you get your standard issue boots. And a lot of times, as soon as you wear those out, you're ready to buy a new pair. A lot of times, we're like, get a pair of Loas. When it comes to tactical stuff, when it comes to military stuff, mm -hmm. Loa is kind of the name, as, as far as I understand, in the industry for high quality tactical boots that you can pretty much do anything in. It's about as versatile boot as you can get. Okay. So when I think of a tactical boot, I'm thinking I'm running, I'm jumping, I'm climbing, but I'm also standing a lot, right. doing a lot of push-ups. I want something light but durable and impervious to elements and the errant shrapnel. Right. Yeah, and you pretty much nailed it too, because like if you look at the inside here, you can see instead of all those layers of leather and all those harder components, you've got a mm. lot of synthetics and nice squishy foam. You've got the synthetic shank that's going to give you just a little bit of like actual flexibility while still supporting your foot. And then you've got that waterproof lining. And so it's, it's a completely different take on boots. Instead of all the heritage style, this is all about comfort, the lightweightness, the breathability while still being waterproof, mm. ready to handle any situation. That's what this boot is. It could be a work boot, it could be a running shoe, yeah. it could be everything. Yeah. Well, to that end, I have brought out the Benchmade SOCP, S-O-C-P. So SOCP stands for Special Operations Combatives Program. And this knife was designed for them. And it's super small. It's like a last-ditch self-defense option. But when you have your finger in this ring, it also prevents you from... Yeah, like, what is that for? What is the ring for? I always see those on knives, and I figure it's like doing some ninja stuff. Like yeah, you around. definitely can do the ninja stuff. I got a name, <laughs> Tomas, who's way into that. Yeah, but, I watched too much Naruto <laughs> growing up. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing is, this is actually kind of special because this sheath is designed to fit in the webbing of a vest or something. Oh, cool. So you cram that in, and then it has this clip that really bites deep. And the reason I thought it would be good for a boot is you could... Put yeah, on your boot as well. But what that means is this can hide behind something. So if you just like it the inside or inside a pocket, mm. or like you have a magazine on your vest, you put this underneath. All you have to do is get your finger to that ring, 
pull it out. Okay. And then you also don't need a huge heavy guard on the knife because right. if I stab something really hard, I can only go up as far as my finger will let me. That makes a lot of sense. I can't believe I never thought about that. <laughs> that for sure makes tons of sense. Let me try that. Yeah. So like when you when you pull this out, do you put your first finger in there and then pull it out? Is that kind of the mm -hmm. idea? Yep. That's and we cool. saw we saw that. We're also going to see that on this next one. But on the Azula, that was sort of an idea there too, is you can yeah. use the finger to help get it out. This one isn't super comfortable to hold with your finger, but I like the sheath. Do you call them sheaths? Sheaths. Yep. Yeah. I like. It's kind of like looks like bones. Looks like vertebrae. I like that. Yeah. Almost bamboo, maybe. I guess bamboo kind of looks like bones too. <laughs> that is sick. I want one of those. Yeah. These are fun. So I thought this would be a good tactical one, yeah. Because like it's a bit of a longer knife, but I think most yeah. tactical boots tend to be pretty tall. Anyway. Right. Yeah. This this could totally work. You know, you got because it clips high enough. Because like this isn't going to be hitting your ankle. You know, you're protected by the boot. So as long mm -hmm. as that thing is clipped up high, you know, you might get a little rub there, but you're mostly cleared. Yeah. And cool. because like I'm looking at the lower here, can I clip it on the yeah do cross section want. here? Yeah. So when you clip it here. Because this one's just a little bit squishier, like that's gonna sit right. a bit more flush that's against good point. your shoulder. So if you're gonna clip inside with just the standard clip, it's gonna be right there and then just, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Man. Because you, would, you wouldn't really feel that. You still mm -hmm. could if you really cinched it down, but because of that squish, it would really hide that those high pressure points. Yeah. So. Nice. For all you tactical boys out there, I think I just found a match made in heaven for you. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> So our last category is everyday carry. All right, so these look like Chelsea boots. Yeah, pretty straightforward. This is just your classic Blundstone. You asked to find an EDC boot, and I just thought through like, okay, what is the boot I just almost accidentally end up in the most? You know, what do I just end up wearing way more than I, I usually would? What do I wear when I'm like tired in the morning? I don't want to wear an uncomfortable heavy boot. I always end up in my Blundstones. And you know they're, they're a Australian brand that's since moved their production overseas, but they're still that like classic Australian brand where it's all about ruggedness, it's all about durable materials, and for the most part, they still maintain that. You know, a lot of people are upset about the fact that they've they're no longer made in Australia, but they're still a really good, reliable boot. They're really comfortable, and the reason that I think I always go back to them is because it is a Chelsea boot. You know, they're not they're easy to put on. You don't have to tie them, and more importantly, they're not like that big pointy Chelsea boot. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like, I'm not a big fan of like big pointy boots. And so for a Chelsea boot, this is one of those boots that kind of took that Chelsea boot style, really pointy, kind of dressy, took the work boot style, combined them into one, and it's just worked for decades now. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, I've seen some of those pointy boots on dudes. I'm like, you look like a vampire, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> like maybe in October. Maybe, yeah. But not, not the rest of the year. Or like, if you're like a skinny dude with narrow, like I, That's I'm me. a bit heavier set. I have wide feet. If I wore that thing, it would look <laughs> so weird. But I could see myself wearing these. Look at that, just yeah. nice round, wide box. Well, and on the inside, like it's all just foam. It's super comfortable. You got that insole. You got a shank supporting that instep or the over where that gap's caused by the heel. Mm -hmm. Then all this through here is just a polyurethane foam and on the bottom is a thermal polyurethane outsole so you get the durability of a really hard wearing thermal polyurethane outsole or TPU with all the squish of the PU or the polyurethane midsole mm-hmm man looks super comfy and they are like you can oh man there's a lot of squish yeah. in that. like you have to push hard you have to yeah even at the pounds. heel you've got like an, a dedicated piece of foam just to give you a little bit of extra squish of the heel man those look so comfy they are yeah they're awesome boots I'm I wear them all the time Okay, and the everyday carry one I brought out is the Tour Knives. You're going to love the name of this one. This is called the Jank Shank. Oh, <laughs> I do like the name of that. Yeah, so this one has a CPM 154 blade. This one's got the walnut handle and sort of this leather-esque textured Kydex sheath. And USA made and a very nice Warncliffe blade. And what I love about that is it likes to bite when you push into things and it also pierces tape really well. Okay, so yeah, is that, that, that's the really sharp point is what you were just yeah. describing? Th that's the blade style here. Okay. Where you get that straight edge and then a needle-like point. Is that more fragile where it's got such a thin point? It, it usually is a little bit of a trade-off okay. there, but this one has a really, a fairly thick blade style. Right. And that gives you quite a bit of tip strength as well. Okay. You still got that ring on the end, mm -hmm. doing some ninja stuff. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm a white boy from Utah. <laughs> I don't do any ninja stuff. But this thing is a great everyday carry knife, in my opinion. Um, it used to be quite a bit thicker, but they thinned it out a good amount. So you mm. still have good strength, but it has a good slicing potential now. And I thought, as a boot knife, like it's such a small sheath. Yeah. And on here, if you attach it there, use something like one of these 
discrete carry clips, so it's just a little tiny hook over. Chuck it right there. That would not be a bad carry at yeah. all. I'd be all over that. I like this little knife. <laughs> this one's cool. The thing I like about it, like you said, that, like that thick stock, mm -hmm. you know, like I just like anytime I see a knife that's built that substantial, I love it because I, I love the same thing when it comes to boots. Like any boot that's like way over the top, super thick stuff, I love it. But especially when when they combine two contradictory things, like mm -hmm. a really thick blade. Because I don't know anything about knives, but like to <laughs> me this is like interesting because I would assume it would have been a really really thin like piece of metal, that thin stock without even like a handle. But mm -hmm. this kind of combines the two of them with that really thick, durable stock. And, and then it's, yeah, it's such cool. a huge footprint. Like yeah, it's a smaller. And it's not knife. super heavy either. I guess that's kind of crazy. You do the ninja stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a cool knife. I like that. I've never even seen a knife with a point like that. Cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, so there you go. So now it's time for us to talk about attachment mechanisms. Okay. We talked about this a little bit when we were talking about work boots. So why do you not want to have a giant knife right on top of your ankle? Yeah, so let me grab a couple different boots we can kind of show some examples. So. There's various points that you could attach a boot, right? We kind of talked about mounting it to the side. We kind of talked about putting on the laces. But you want to keep in mind, anytime you're attaching anything to a boot, you've got your critical flex points. You know, you've got right here at the toe that you're going to be flexing. Not that you're going to mount a knife to that, but it's still important to know. Mm -hmm. And right over here on the instep, that's where you do a lot of that flexing. So anytime you're mounting a knife to a boot, you want to make sure it's not over that instep. And so that's where you either want to like figure out a way to mount it to the outside or attach to the laces up high and uh, avoid that angle ankle where they got that bone coming through, the flex point here and the flex point there. Okay. And when it comes to mounting, we talked a little bit about this as well. You don't want something that's going to be huge on the inside of your boot. Right. Because that'll chew up your leg and yeah. not feel good. Because if you want to embarrass yourself, take your boot off and have the side of it full of blood. <laughs> so I would so one of the common options people are asking is like, would an ulti clip do it? And I'm looking at that. That's a really thick clip. Yeah. It's going to hurt you a little bit on the inside. Yeah, these are designed to be holster clips, like inside your belt or something. And that would be a bit painful on the ankle, I think. Right. There's, and there's other ways that people attach uh, knives to boots. You know, some people will just get a thin leather strap around the outside. There's a few different places that sell them. Tons of people sell, like, uh, boot straps. And what that does is help keep your boot tight, but people have learned that they can just use that as a knife attachment and you kind of thread it through the laces. A lot of times the laces will go through mm -hmm. to keep it in place. Other times, you know, you've got a boot pocket kit that we happen to sell. I guess it's a shameless plug, but a lot of people say, Oh, you have a boot like, pocket clip? Hey, okay, we're linking that in the description. Let me just take my boot off. <laughs> you can also can cut this out if you want, but... Let me just take my boot off. <laughs> it is like, it is a way people attach them. Okay. So like, like this is the boot I wore into the Blade HQ. You can see this has a little a little uh, pocket on the side here. It's just a piece of leather that's sewn on. And a lot of people sell these. We sell them. But like, I just love these because on these taller boots, like this Heritage boot, you know, this mm -hmm. is kind of your tactical Heritage boot that we designed with Nick's handmade boots. They're like the highest quality boots, uh, one of the highest quality boots made in the U.S. They're all mm -hmm. up in the Pacific Northwest. They all make these heavy-duty logger boots, these firefighting boots, these work boots, and they're ridiculous. And so on a taller leather boot like this, you can get away with sewing a little patch on the side. And you can just get like some, some cheap leather from Tandy you can get cheap leather from pretty much anywhere, kind of cut your own out and sew it onto the side of your boot. So that's another way you can attach a knife to your boot. Yeah, so it looks like you've got a Gerber EAB in here. Yeah, I was like, I, I thought about sw swapping it out. I was like, should I bring like something else besides my $20 Amazon knife? I was I like, it's tried and true. <laughs> it's what I use. You know, like, you know it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hard to lose a, a knife in your boot, especially if you have a pocket like that. Mm -hmm. But if we like throw but, this clip in there. That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, look at that. That's a comfortable way to carry an SE Azula right there. Wow. Okay. Check that out. Just okay, you just game new. changed boot knives for me. <laughs> like, I didn't realize, I, and I guess I see something like this, I'm like, I don't want to sew in that. Yeah. I mean, how hard is it to work with leather? It's, really? it's not crazy, because okay. really all you need to do that is a, a little awl to punch the holes, a needle on either end of a single piece of thread, and then you just saddle stitch that on in a traditional saddle stitch technique. Mm -hmm. So instead of lock stitching like a sewing machine, you almost weave the thread through. And it's easy to do. There's a lot of tutorials online. You can figure it out. Like you don't have to get it from us. It's, you can make it yourself. But it is a really effective way of attaching a boot. Or it's not rocket boot. surgery, but you can get your knife in your boot. That's right. Man, I, I might have to get a pair of boots and do that. I'll look it up. It's like, how about boot knives? Because boot knives are so cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And also, the last thing I wanted to tell you is the vast majority of these boots, excuse me, these knives are not 
designed to be carried in boots. I imagine that that might throw off the balance of your feet a little bit. You can still carry this on your belt or in your pocket, and it would match your boot just as well. Yeah. But there's something extra cool about having a knife in your boot, isn't there? It is pretty fun. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. Well, Weston, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Everybody, once again, make sure you head over to Roseanneville. Check out all their awesome videos of cutting stuff in half about how Twister has totally stole his patent. <laughs> That's a fun story. you got to check that video out. And most of all, if you got a boot and you got a knife, see if you can find a way to combine the two. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Similar, similar industries. It's fun. You get into it. You get all the details, all the materials. Figure out what works for which. You make a quiver of all the different stuff that you don't even. You're never going to use in a full capacity, but you mm -hmm. just co uh, collect it all. And it's it's the same fun thing about boots as the same thing about knives. And so that's why I've really enjoyed kind of working with you guys. You guys have been sending us knife to unbox. I'm like unboxing stuff. People are like, oh my gosh, that is a nice knife. I'm like, I just I carry a Gerber with me most of the time. <laughs> so it's been cool starting to get into this knife world and learn as much as I can. Well, be careful. It's a very easy bug to catch. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm afraid boots might be as well. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time.